and batil, you're familiar with the word haq, the truth, batil is falsehood, exist on earth, there will always be a conflict between them. They will always battle one another. قال تعالى ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لفسدت الأرض. And actually this conflict somehow based on that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah preserve earth from corruption. So that حق and باطل as long as there is Tawheed, there is Shirk, there is Sunnah, there is Bid'ah, there is objective morality, subjective morality, if you know the difference between the two. Objective is Allah decides what's moral and what's immoral. Subjective, the people democracy chooses what is moral and what's immoral. So as long as you have those two trends on earth, there will always be a conflict. And very interesting, the forefront of this conflict is the next generation, the children. Why? Because those who are dominant, the dominant culture, they want to maintain their dominance and the only way they can do that if they keep the next generation under their wings and those who are not in control not dominant their hope is in the next generation the ummah the muslims hope is in the next generation is the children so that the forefront is always the next generation and this is, by the way, a satanic who, who is the head of the uh, falsehood on earth, the one who, who manages the campaign of falsehood on earth. That's a, a satanic strategy. في صحيح الإمام مسلم حديث جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنهما The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tells us that every single day Shaytan, inna shaytan yada'u arshahu ala al-ma' wa thalika fi kul yawm. Shaytan places his throne on water. And I'm talking about shaytan, the one who refused to bow down to Adam. The, the big guy, the one who doesn't die. The one who lives until the day of judgment. We know that al-jinn yamutun, jinn actually die. His race, they die, but him, he doesn't die. So this one would, 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 would have his throne on water every day to give incentive to his uh, followers and his uh, army uh, from the jinn. And he would say to them, Man Musliman al taj. Whoever does the best job in misguiding Muslims today, I will reward you tonight. I don't want to go over the hadith, beautiful hadith, but... At the end of the day, he actually rewards those who separated a husband and wife. Not someone who committed adultery. Not someone who killed. Although these are hyenas, crimes, major sins, kabair fil Islam. But why is he after a husband and wife separating? Because this is the place where the next generation comes when that place is disrupted is not in a good shape because normally the parents are the one who really suffer uh, I'm sorry the children are the one who really suffer from a divorce a husband and wife divorcing you know he's gonna go marry another one and she's gonna marry another guy but who's gonna pay the price the next generation weaker gen generations that's why it's very strategic there is uh, verse 102 surah al-baqarah with what we call the Ayat al-Sihr. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the most devastating consequences, consequence of sorcery, فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Allah named the most devastating consequence in that verse, that they would learn sorcery, and here is the most damaging impact, 
is to separate a husband and wife. It's a satanic thing. Uh, also, we learn from the Quran and Sunnah that the disbelievers may reach the, or the, the, the people who had that campaign of falsehood, they may do something that is out of this world, is, is, is the top of the line basically to uh, make sure that the next generation, generation is, in, is under their domain. Take the example of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh had to kill children because he was told that there is a threat for his dominion, for his power. He actually literally, literally, يذبح إن فرعون على في الأرض وجعل أهلها شيعا يستضعف طائفة منهم يذبح أبناءهم. Can you imagine when, when, a, when a woman in Egypt at that time is pregnant, there is a record of them. As soon as whack, 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 the baby is out, cops are coming in, you know, taken in front of his mom. Why would you do that to kids? Oh, it's a threat to his. You see, Hadith al Futun Ibn Abbas, that he was told that a newborn now is about to be born and. Likewise now, we live at a time, by the way, we, we may not slaughter the children literally, but very close actually. You tell me what logic on teaching kids sexuality and every type of abnormal sexual preference <laughs> sexual with a cat, sexual with, 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 with a man, with a... But the normal one is, is what, 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 what's going on here? It's, yeah, you're not slaughtering the children literally with a knife, but that's slaughtering their fitra. <laughs> you're swifting, their, you're swaying their fitra. And, and who's responsible for that? The parents. You're responsible. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كل مولود يولد على الفطرة. Every newborn is born in فطرة. Now who's responsible for guarding and protecting this فطرة? Not only that, by the way, to connect that فطرة with the divine guidance. ما هو you're not only uh, responsible for uh, uh, safeguarding or, or, or protecting. Uh, the inherent tendency to the truth which is placed inside, which we call fitrah, inside the heart of your children, you're supposed to connect it with the revelation too, so that it's enhanced. That's how you protect it. You, parents, you're responsible. You're responsible. Yeah, I know it's weird. You have to send your children to these places where they learn that stuff. Many of you, it's weird, but it's still, this doesn't make you, this doesn't exempt you, the point I'm trying to make, this doesn't exempt you as an individual parent or as a community that you have to do something about protecting the fitra of your children. That you cannot allow this to take place, and I'm, I'm talking here, I'm not inciting any hate here or anything. You should not, you should pursue whatever legal means you have in your position to make a stop to this because this is going to destroy your children. And if you think this is not going to get to you because you're a Muslim and your children, no. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he wanted us to depict the influence we have on one another, he given us that uh, illustration of a boat. You know, Hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashira, a boat, some on the top, some on the bottom, right? And the people on the bottom want to do what? Dig a hole. Actually, the, the, the people on the bottom, they, they, they have good intention. They, you see, what they want, they, they don't want to disturb the people on the top there. They say, we, we don't want to disturb you, we like you, and, and we, we feel like we're really offending you every time we come and take water. You know, they have good intention. The way that they, but if the people of, in the top let them do that, what is going to happen to the whole boat? the whole entire community will, will collapse. 
I know that we don't, we don't condone these things as Muslims in our homes, but the non-Muslim will come to you. Uh, also, we learn from the Quran and Sunnah that you may have to do the illogical, the unreasonable to save your child. Something that is not reasonable in the eyes of the beholders. How the mother of Musa protected Musa? How? Did she do something reasonable? What did she do? She thrown her baby in the Nile River. <laughs> Anybody who would, would see a mother doing this now, she's going to say, you're out of your mind. But this is how you will protect your child. It's reasonable. So you, you, you may have to pursue some illogical means, like, you know what, I'm not going to send my child to that public school system. Oh, he, what about you? I want him to be a doctor, engineer. You want him to be successful. In the, your job is to protect his hereafter as a father. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nar. Your job is to protect his akhirah, not his dunya. His dunya Allah will provide for him. What are you worried about his akhirah? His akhirah. Protect him from the hellfire. So you may have to do the illogical things that are what uh, is, is not a mainstream. Like starting an Islamic school, working together as a community, like starting a campaign to combat these uh, ideologies which are penetrating and uh, it's overwhelming. And, and I, I come from uh, America, North America. It's crazy. Stuff that you cannot even hear as a grown-up being taught to kids in public school about sexuality, about gender. Why would you do that? Ah, oh, it's about what? Next generation, we want them to be swayed. We want them to be what? Under our dominance. And when it comes to this particular, particular one, brothers and sisters in Islam, Qawmulut thing, it takes one generation to corrupt. One generation to corrupt. Because it's addiction. It's not something that you can just leave. And people find a way to justify it. So pay attention here. In closing, I don't want to take over my time. You don't want also to completely seclude and isolate your child from what's going on. That would be unwise as well. Because at the end of the day, you're not only trying to save him, you're actually trying to equip him with the tools, with the means to help non-Muslims. Because that's really why we're here, why we're here in, in the West. If you think you're here in the West to, to drive a, a, a Mercedes or a BMW, uh, good luck with that. But Allah sent you here, Jihad al-Talab is done. Khalas. Jihad al-Talab, where Islam used to go out to the world through that Jihad al-Talab, if you know what I, what I mean by it, I don't want to go there. Huh? So Allah thrown poverty into our societies. Huh? Leaders who are dummy, puppets to their whoever they are, and that society is poor. Okay, I don't have a chance to live here. To have a decent life, I have to go to America, I have to go to England, I have to go to Europe. But with that, a lot of people think that they came here for the money, for a better life. La, Allah chose you to convey this message to those people. Allah brought you to help them save their children too. The point I'm trying to make here is the, the seclusion approach that teaching your child virtuals, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, virtues, uh, uh, apart from what's going on in the society, this is not going to work either because at the end of the day, he's going to have to interact with this environment. So the way that you do it is the critical thinking approach. And we have hadith, ya ikhwa, out of this world. Uh, it's a beautiful hadith, lengthy. But uh, if I narrate it to you, I will drive my point across. 
I'm talking about Hadith uh, uh, Abu, uh, Abu Yahya, Suhaib al-Rumi. The Hadith that explains Surah Al-Buruj. The famous story, the boy and the king. Look, look at this. كَانَ فِي مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ مَلِكُمْ The Hadith of Sahih Imam Muslim, authenticity is there. كَانَ فِي مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ مَلِكُمْ Malik, anybody, there was a community, they have a head. Head of state, king, leader, president, whoever it is. And this man used to dominate the crowd using lies, sorcery. That can equate these days the media. You know, they, they keep telling you stuff, feed you stuff until you believe it. Sorcery. He had a sorcerer. The only way for him to maintain his authority is through lies. That you lie to the people. Like that they kept telling you, Saddam Hussein has nuclear. Saddam Hussein has nuclear. Saddam Hussein has nuclear. I, I believed it. I was living in America. I believed it. Oh, they kept, oh, we made a mistake. You never had them. Sorry. That they just came out, a report. Media. They make you think what they want you to think. So that's a sorcerer. Look at this. The sorcerer is a keen individual he's keen on passing on his skills to the next generation so he comes to the king listen you know and i know the way that you dominate the crowd is through me now i'm gonna die so do you want to keep your dominion you want to keep your kingship so i have to pass this on to what the same uh, to the next generation i need a good smart young boy so i can teach him sorcery I, I'm going through the story my way, okay? The hadith is totally different. I'm, I'm using my own <laughs> little input here because of time. I'm, I have five more minutes. So, subhanallah, they, they brought the boy. Look at this now. Allah has will that this boy, in his way to learn sorcery, he comes across the truth. He was walking to receive sorcery lessons as he was walking, he heard someone reciting the revelation. Imagine. So he's, he's going to learn shirk. Sorcery is shirk. Kufr. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السحر. But he hears the tawheed. So he stops by. You see, kids at this age, fresh age, they are moldable, they, they tell you. You can shape them any way that you want. That's why they go after the children. And when, when you mold them in a certain way, it's done. It's very hard to break through later on. That's why they go after the kids. Uh, so he started hearing the revelation. Imagine this young boy, brothers and sisters in Islam, every single day he was learning Tawheed and Shirk. He was learning truth and falsehood every day. As a matter of fact, and, and that also, you know, a message that we really should, uh, you know, be sent to the masajid, that this boy at one stage, the sorcerer would beat him up for being late. And then when he goes home late, his father would beat him up too. So he gets beaten up twice. But subhanallah, any child now, you know, so he goes to that place where he learns haram stuff and then he gets beaten up for learning the truth. Any boy, any boy now huh, would say, I'm done with that. No, he still went to the sheikh. That shows you the sheikh is attraction. The sheikh has to be attraction. You know, that, that, that mentality of you know, harsh. The, the, the masjid environment has to be inviting to the children. It can't be. It, it, the boy still came back. And actually, the boy told him, help me out. I get beaten up to be here twice. And he helped him. He gave him a fatwa. This is what you need to do to save yourself from that. A shahid brothers and sisters in Islam. This boy was learning Good and bad, Tawheed and Shirk. 
And whether you like it or not, this is what your children are going through right now. But unfortunately, I want to tell you that, unfortunately, a lot of parents are negligent that they fail to at least give their kids the sheikh portion. A lot of parents send them to the public school, and then maybe send him one, one, one hour in the weekend to Islamic, learn Quran, yada, khalas, good. Yeah. So eight hours a day of shirk, you want to balance it with one hour in a weekend school or one hour a day somewhere? <laughs> you see, the boy used to spend the same time equally. And with that, he developed, he developed what they say, critical thinking. Critical thinking. He said, those two cannot be right. This boy, those two cannot be right. They cannot be right. What the sheikh is teaching me and what this man is teaching me cannot be compatible at all. One of them has to be right and one of them has to be wrong. That's what you call what? That's what you want to bring your child to, to that level. That actually they think for themselves. And that's what happened to this boy. And look at this, Allah held him out. A scene, uh, a lion holding the people from going about their work, blocking their way. The sorcerer calls him up. Now I taught you so much, go and, and solve that problem for the community. He had a better plan. He had a much better plan. He went out there and he said, today, Allah is going to guide me. Look what he said. اليوم أعلم أأمر الراهب أحب إلى الله أم أمر السحر. Today I want to find out which one Allah loves most. What the Sheikh has been teaching me or what the sorcerer has been teaching me. Now I'm going to pick up this pebble, small rock, which no way can kill a camel, uh, kill a, a lion, and I'm going to throw it. Oh Allah, oh Allah, that's what you want your child to do, by the way. He said, that's the way to go about solving, facing that problem. Oh Allah, if you love what the Sheikh, if you love Tawheed more than Shirk, if you love Sunnah more than Bidda, if you love Quran more than heretic religions, if you love the Quran and Sunnah based on the understanding of Salaf al Ummah, kill that rock, kill that lie with this rock. You know, when you go sincerely for Allah seeking guides, Allah will guide you. Allah shown him the lion was killed. He said, now I'm going to give my life for this. Hopefully you got the message. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Lahu alhamdul hasan. Wa thana'u al-jameel. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters in Islam There is an individual responsibility over the next generation and there is a communal, community responsibility. Not because you live in the West, you live in England, that you can be exempt from that responsibility. Allah revealed the guidance to direct you, to guide you, on how to save your kids from that fitna. And on the Day of Judgment, you're going to stand in front of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have children. Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, fil Bukhari wa Muslim, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullukum ra' wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyati. All of you are custodian, and all of you will be asked on the day of judgment about your custody. Ar-rajul ra'in fi ahli bayti. Hakadha. Fi hadith, Ma'aqal ibn Yasar, 
صلى الله عليه وسلم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من عبد يسترعيه الله رعية ثم يموت يوم يموت وهو غاش لها إلا وحرمه الله على الجنة Anyone Allah places a responsibility in his hand, between his hands, and he betrays that. Haram Jannah for him. Fa pay attention to these brothers and sisters in Islam. Nas Allah al Azim, Rabbil Arsh al Kareem, and Yahfad Auladana Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our offspring from the harm, from the drugs, from the adultery, from the nudity. from the pornography, from all these epidemics, all these ailments which are spreading in this world, brothers and sisters in Islam. Allahumma aghfir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna al qawm al kafirin. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna attiba'a wa arina al batila batilan wa rizuqna ajtinaba. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al fitani ma zahra minha wa ma batana ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma ansur deenaka wa sunna